Well, hey guys, today's video is a must if you have melasma. I'm gonna be giving you dermatologist tips and things that you need to know if you have melasma, things that cause melasma and trigger melasma. Melasma is actually a disease of hyperpigmentation in which you have dark brown patches that kind of have angulated borders, most often on the cheeks, can happen though anywhere on the face and sometimes on the neck. And melasma, you probably are aware of, is aggravated by sun exposure, but there are a lot of other things that contribute to melasma. The first being heat. Um, while melasma is a disease of hyperpigmentation, another component of melasma is dilated blood vessels in the skin and some underlying redness. And heat exposure actually worsens the dilation of the blood vessels that contributes to melasma. So for people who go through melasma treatment, their melasma maybe gets a little bit better, and then later on it comes back, heat exposure may actually be a one thing that triggered it. Heat can come from lamps that are overhead. It can also come from your blow dryers. If you work in a kitchen or you cook a lot over steam, that certainly can, can lead to a lot of dilation of blood vessels and redness. If you go into saunas, steam rooms, or you have one of those facial steaming devices, these two all can worsen vasodilation in the skin, which contributes to the underlying sort of redness component that drives melasma. Heat also causes some irritation in the skin, and that irritation can increase the activity of the melanocytes, which are the cell in your skin that makes pigment, and lead to the darkness and discoloration that you are trying to avoid. So those are some common triggers. And a tip, if you blow dry your hair, try and direct the uh, air away from your skin, away from your face as best you're able, or just stop using hair dryers in general. And if you work in a kitchen set setting or you're doing a lot of cooking, a tip for you guys is to actually put some ice chips in your mouth while you're doing these things that expose you to heat because that will help lower your core body temperature and kind of combat the dry for vasodilation in the skin. You know, they sell all of these devices online and I see them, you know, on Instagram, these ice rollers for the face. And I wouldn't recommend those because depending on the temperature that you're applying to the skin, actually putting cold things right up against the skin can also be bad and cause irritation and inflammation. But putting ice chips in your mouth, just under your tongue and letting them slowly dissolve is a better way to kind of help in modifying the core body temperature while you're in the presence of heat to reduce that that redness. This is also a good tip, by the way, if you have rosacea and your face gets really red when you um, get hot or overheated, uh, is to use ice chips in your mouth and just let them dissolve. Or, you know, sip on ice cold water, that too can help. Speaking of heat though, if you are like me and you love your hot beverages, coffee included, the steam from the hot beverage can obviously uh, worsen your, your vasodilation in the skin. And so maybe switching to iced coffee, although for me, I'm just like, I can't. I love, I mean, I like iced coffee, but I need the hot coffee in the morning. So yeah, likewise, hot soups can, can lead to more redness. All right, I already alluded to this and you guys probably are already aware of the fact that ultraviolet radiation from the sun is a major, major, major driving force for melasma. It leads to increased activity of melanocytes that make pigment in the skin. And protecting your skin from ultraviolet radiation is so important. You need to be wearing a broad spectrum sunscreen. Everybody associates UV exposure with a sunburn, but we don't typically receive sunburn doses all year round, all the time, but we are, our skin is being exposed to ultraviolet radiation at different wavelengths that don't necessarily burn the skin, but contribute to a lot of skin problems, including melasma. The part of the, um, of the sun that contributes to melasma in terms of UV is also UVA. That's what actually comes in through window glass. And uh, so if you sit in an office by a window, not only do you have the UVA coming in, but it tends to get heat. So you have heat on your skin as well. And that combination of the UVA coming in and the heat can, can worsen your melasma and be a trigger for you. I want to underscore to you guys though that ultraviolet radiation is something that you don't see. 
it's not the same as visible light that illuminates our world and that we see with our eyes. So you may not actually be super aware of the fact that you are being exposed to it. Like I said, it comes in through the window glass, it comes through clouds, so even on a cloudy day, you have to be aware of it. And it's scattered and reflected off of surfaces, including snow. If you ski, you're already at altitude, you have a higher, a higher um, exposure to ultraviolet radiation from the sun, and it's getting reflected and scattered and intensified from the snow. And in a moment, I'm gonna get into the best sunscreens for people with melasma, but wearing sunscreen is a really important part. You gotta do it all year round. And my rule of thumb is, as part of a habit, to just make sure you apply it three times a day. All sunscreen needs to be reapplied because it rubs off and you start losing that protection. And don't just rely on sunscreen alone. Wear a sun protective hat while you're outside. And in the case of melasma, sometimes a game changer, although people are really uncomfortable wearing it, and I, I get it, you know, it's not like the most fashionable thing, is to wear a face shield. But, you know, situations where you may feel more comfortable or more inclined to wear a face shield are if you just paid for an expensive procedure to treat your melasma and you want to protect your investment and not have your melasma come back, wearing one of these, at least during your day-to-day -day commute in the car, can really help cut down on that UV exposure. And this one that I have here is from Cooley Bar. They make uh, UPF 50 clothing. And the reason I'm holding this one up is that I find, I've, I've tried a lot of the face shields. The Cooley Bar one actually is the coolest in terms of it doesn't make your face hot and sweaty. It's really breathable. The material is just super lightweight and it covers your nose and it actually will sit right up against the lower part of your um, orbital bone. So you get pretty good coverage and it covers your neck as well. So I really like that in addition to a hat, but also scarves are, are also useful, although we're getting into spring and then summer, so that may be a little bit too warm for that. You have to do what's right for you, but I've got to give you a comprehensive picture of what sun protection looks like. So we've talked about heat, we've talked about ultraviolet radiation. The third thing is visible light, specifically visible light in the wavelengths of blue light. They're referred to as pro-pigmenting wavelengths. People aren't aware of this necessarily, but certain blue light that is emitted from our devices and overhead lights in particular, but a whopping dose of which comes from the sun, can drive hyperpigmentation, including melasma. I have a video all about blue light from our devices and how to protect your skin from it. But this is relevant to people with melasma, obviously, because it is a disease of hyperpigmentation. So what's the best sunscreen to protect your skin then if you have melasma? It's going to be a mineral sunscreen that has large particle zinc oxide and is tinted and the reason for that is that large particle zinc oxide will protect you against UVB and UVA really well. So all wavelengths of ultraviolet radiation that damage the skin. The other reason is that the tint includes an ingredient called iron oxides. And iron oxides are inactive ingredients in tinted sunscreens that have been shown to protect against pro-pigmenting wavelengths of visible light. They're not gonna be listed as the active ingredient, but you'll see them listed as iron oxides. And I mean, they're present in 99.9% .9 of tinted sunscreens. So that's why I recommend a tinted mineral sunscreen. And then the last reason for choosing a mineral sunscreen is that mineral sunscreens tend to be less irritating than chemical sunscreens. And if you're not familiar with the difference between a mineral sunscreen and a chemical sunscreen, check out some of my sunscreen videos below. But to remind you, a mineral sunscreen is one that has either zinc or a combination of zinc and titanium dioxide or sometimes titanium dioxide by itself. So those are mineral sunscreens. They tend to be less irritating than chemical sunscreens, which have filters that absorb ultraviolet radiation. And these filters include things like avabenzone, oxybenzone, octinoxate. And for many people, those filters, uh, while they do offer decent protection against ultraviolet radiation, they can be irritating. The formulations of the sunscreen overall can be very irritating. And that irritation can actually worsen melasma. So that's why I recommend a tinted mineral sunscreen. However, if you live outside the US, 
Um, you have at your disposal a variety of other chemical active ingredients in your sunscreens. Because outside of the US, you guys have these other chemical filters that are not approved for use here, you have more, your sunscreen manufacturers have more uh, in their armamentarium, and they can actually make chemical sunscreens that tend to be a little less irritating, although there's no guarantee of that. Uh, but I'm saying that because if you live outside of the US and you're having a hard time finding a tinted mineral sunscreen, there are good chemical tinted sunscreens that have iron oxides in them and are not irritating and are designed to protect against hyperpigmentation. One of the best ones out there, although it has a very dark tint, is actually by a brand called Altruist. I've reviewed it for you guys before. That is a really good one for people with hyperpigmentation as well as redness. So I recommend that or I recommend Bioderma AR. Those are two chemical sunscreens outside of the US. It's not for the US, you, you won't find them here. But if you live outside of the US, those are two chemical sunscreens for people with melasma that are pretty well tolerated and a good choice. Now, <clears throat> I already kind of alluded to this next point when I was talking about how chemical sunscreens can be irritating, but skincare products in general can be very irritating, and that's something you have to be aware of. Whenever there's any hint of irritation on your skin, irritation equates to inflammation, which leads to upregulation of melanocyte activity and more pigmentation. And so you have to be really careful to not overdo it with your skincare product usage. Minimal is best, just keep it simple. Focused on sunscreen and finding a good sunscreen. And you know, you'll find a lot of products out there that make claims to improve hyperpigmentation. And while they can help, they do come with a risk of irritation from those different ingredients. And so, you know, it's hard to predict if something's gonna be irritating to you. So your best bet is to just keep it simple from the start. Now, I already mentioned that chemical sunscreens can be very irritating, but another common ingredient in skincare products that not only is irritating, but also directly causes vasodilation is the presence of fragrance. It'll either be listed as fragrance or goes by a variety of other names, which I'll list down below in the description box. But fragrance itself can cause vasodilation and some fragrance ingredients actually will interact with ultraviolet radiation from the sun and cause what's called a photo uh, dermatitis, which definitely will worsen your melasma. So keep it simple with the skincare products. And that also includes makeup. So in the description box, I will list some excellent sunscreens for people with melasma. So check that out. But uh, <clears throat> I mentioned keeping your skincare product routine minimal. Let's talk about makeup. Makeup is something that can either be a friend or a foe. A lot of makeup has added fragrance and can be irritating and drying. However, certain uh, foundations and concealers as well as uh, powders can actually be helpful because they are essentially giving you some pr additional protection against those pro-pigmenting wavelengths of visible light because they do have iron oxides in them. And a lot of makeup also has some mineral SPF to it. So a brand that I recommend to you guys, if you're coping with melasma, that can really help, not only in camouflaging it, but in protecting it, is Dermablend. I'm not affiliated with Dermablend or any, anything. Uh, it's just what I've always recommended to people. It is free of added fragrance and mineral only, very low risk of irritation with their makeup. Although no, there's no such thing as a foolproof product, but it does all of their, all of their makeup and cosmetics come with SPF and it's just the one in my experience tends to be the most well suited, but I'm not a makeup aficionado. So that that's my recommendation in terms of makeup. But lastly, something that you may not be aware of is aviator sunglasses. These are a very common trigger for melasma as well as reason for recurrence of melasma. I've told you guys in my videos before how important it is to protect your eyes from the sun by wearing sunglasses, ideally sunglasses that wrap around. However, aviator sunglasses are actually the worst choice, especially if you have melasma or any other skin condition with hyperpigmentation because the metal frames actually scatter and reflect ultraviolet radiation that obviously can increase melanocyte activity, but they also conduct heat to your skin. We see a lot of cases of hyperpigmentation on the upper half of the cheeks uh, where the sunglasses are hitting because of that. 
So check your sunglasses. Aviators are a common offender, but other sunglasses that have metal rims, something you're gonna wanna avoid. They, they conduct heat, they scatter and reflect ultraviolet radiation and those pro-pigmenting wavelengths of visible light. So that's something you need to be aware of, switching out to non-metal frames. But yeah, avoid the metal rims. I know they're cool, but they can definitely cause hyperpigmentation on your cheeks and around your eyes. So those are my tips for melasma. I hope you guys found them helpful. Maybe some things that you didn't know or weren't aware of that can help you in preventing recurrences if you've had good success with certain treatments. Uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.